Hello everyone, welcome back to Streaming Alchemy. I'm John Mahoney, and on today's show, we're going to be doing part two of our look at using Google Sheets with vMix. And in this show, we're going to be looking a bit at Google Apps Scripting, which is another scripting language we can use to integrate some automation into our productions. But before we get there, uh, I want to welcome everybody to uh, share any thoughts, any uh, feedback, any questions in the comments section, and we'll answer them here on the show. Also, if anybody would like to join us here live on air, uh, we have a link in the show notes and down here on the screen that uh, is you go here and somebody in the studio will get you on to join us here. So we'd love to have you. Whatever, we love participation. So however you'd like to join us, we appreciate it. So let's actually uh, get started talking a little bit about what we want to cover today. So in last week's show, we looked at how you could link a Google Sheet spreadsheet into vMix using basically uh, the Google API key and the data sources manager in vMix, combining those two to actually populate data in a Google Sheet and then leverage that data inside of vMix for doing lower thirds. Now, the limitations with that are we basically would have to work with all the data that's inside of the uh, that's inside of vMix, and we'd have to do that somehow through a uh, leveraging scripting and title designer. So it would be a little bit awkward. So what we decided, instead of taking that approach, which is doable as a, a approach for working with that data, is we said, what if we worked with it on the spreadsheet side instead of on the vMix side? Uh, and we realized that that gave us a lot of flexibility to do some interesting things. So for today's show, we're going to be looking at something called Google Apps Scripting. And it's basically very similar to JavaScript, a little bit different from the Visual Basic scripting that vMix uses, but the same general conceptual model for writing scripting-based code. So what we're going to do is we're going to work with a sheet that has a list of all the names of people that are going to be on panels for this uh, event we're holding for this example. And within this sheet, we will have a number in the first column that says what panel these guests are going to be a part of. And so this whole list will basically have all the things we'll need for each participant uh, to display their lower thirds. So that will be the panel they're on, their name, their title, the organization they're with, and then an image of the panelists that we can all put up in a lower third. And we have that for, in this case, we have eight panels that we have that we're going to be covering here. So if we were to do this the way we did last week, what you'd have in vMix would be this long sheet of uh, items inside of vMix that we would then have to parse using something like GT Title Designer. But by using code inside of Google Sheets, what we can do is create a second sheet that has the results we want, the rows that we want at any given time. So in this case, what we want to do is take anybody in a specific panel. So if we said panel one, panel two, panel three, we want to take all of those rows of data and we're going to send that over to a second sheet in this workbook. So if you look at the names of our sheets, it's a little bit tough to see, but we have a source and a destination name. So the source sheet is everybody. The destination sheet, these are the people that would be part of the currently active panel. And so what we need to do to pick this up is much simpler in vMix. We simply, if I, let me see if I just switch over here to the vMix side of the house. Uh, if I go over to my data sources manager, you'll see that I have my events panel, same basic workbook that we were talking with last time, and I have 
in the table section, I have the two sheets, the source sheet, but I now also have the destination sheet. And this model will let us, by populating the destination sheet, in vMix now, all we need to do is look at this destination sheet to do everything with the currently active panel. And that's the model we're using. Copy everything we want from the source sheet to the destination sheet, and in vMix, leverage the destination sheet to populate all our lower thirds. So, how do we do this? Uh, one of the cool things with all of the Google uh, apps is that they have scripting baked into them and sort of foundational to the platform. And with Google Sheets, they actually have fairly comprehensive scripting capabilities. So the way you access this is there is a little uh, option up here under Tools. So if I go to the spreadsheet here, under the Tools option in the menu, you pull that down, you'll see there's something called Script Editor. So if you click on Script Editor, what this will do is it will open up all the scripts that you have that are associated with this particular Google project. And if you remember when we set this up last week, uh, we set it up as a project. And that's sort of the model that Google uses if you're going to do any types of calls with that. So in this project now, we've added some scripting. And I this, would, this is a full editor. It does everything. It does look ahead. So the tool here that I'm, I'm showing you by going into the Google Sheets scripting editor, this is a comprehensive editor. And you can do everything you need to here. But for visibility, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to, let me see if I can call up, uh, yeah, this, so I'm going to use Visual Studio Code because it's probably a little easier to see on, uh, on the stream. And, but we'll go through everything, but this would all be what you'd edit over in uh, the, the uh, scripting tool inside of your Google Sheets. So what we want for this is we want to set up a function that takes as an argument, an, an incoming variable, what group of participants do I want to copy to the second sheet. And so the function that we've set up for that is called populate group n. And the argument it takes is what group, what panel, group of panelists do I want to leverage here? So it takes that in as an argument. And then we're going to start to do things that you'll kind of recognize from what we've done with Visual Basic, but there'll be some syntax changes. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to declare and define some variables. So in Visual Basic, we always did that with a dim statement. And in JavaScript, which a Google script is what they call it, it, it takes after, you use something called a let statement. So let is how you define a variable. So let this variable equal this object. And so what we're doing here now is we're creating something which is, this is a pointer to my source sheet, and it's doing that. That's the one with all of the participants. And we say, go to the spreadsheet app. That's the object. And then we have a method called get active spreadsheet and get sheet by name. And the name is source. So in this case, we're saying, go get the active spreadsheet and get the sheet by name that is named source and assign that to the source sheet. So now I have an object that contains my source sheet. And we do the same with the destination. Let statement instead of dim, but destination sheet and we pull that second sheet in using the same mechanism. So for sort of good programming practice, we just make sure that we actually have values in there that it didn't come up null because we don't want to crash out of anything. So in here, we have the source sheet and the destination sheet. If either of those are null, then we just log an error and we return, get out of the script. So that way we're guaranteed we have something going on uh, with the actual spreadsheets being there. And then we're going to start to go through and access the data in this. But let me take a quick break before I get there and take a quick look at everybody that's been coming in on the uh, chat. So James Redmond. James, great to see you again. Thank you for joining us here. We have uh, Randall Packer. Randall, uh, 
Randall's a, uh, a good friend uh, from the Washington, D.C. area. He does some incredible things with uh, participatory media, and uh, definitely look him up. He's, he's got some great things going on. Uh, so Samuel Nordvik, Samuel, thank you for taking the time to come in and join us. We really appreciate having you here. So let's get back. So now that we set everything up and we have objects that are the two sheets we need to work with, uh, we're going to start to pull data out of them. And so what we have is a method for a spreadsheet type object is a, a spreadsheet app object is something to get data range. And what the data range says is find every cell that there's values in and sort of mark that out as the full range. And that's basically a sort of a indicator of the, the width and the height of the array of data we're going to deal with. And then on top of that, we're using a method called get values that will pull all those values out and assign it into source data. So what we are doing here for in, in source data is we're effectively creating an array, a list of things. Each one of them contains an array of values. So basically the rows are one dimension of our array. Uh, and you know that would be the number of rows you have. And then each value in that row, the columns, is the other dimension of this array. And so now we've pulled all that data, or referenced all that data, into something called source data. And so, again, with good programming practice, we're making sure there's something there, that it's not zero length, zero height. So we do all that error checking, and we log it if there's an error. But now what we've actually done is we've collected all the data, and so we want to prep the sheet that we're going to be writing to, the destination sheet, to make sure that we have that all cleared out. So that's the first thing we do is say, get the destination sheet and get this full range of data uh, that could be in that sheet. And we go from one one to the max rows and the max columns. And then we're using the method clear content. And this will take everything that's in that other destination sheet and clear it out. Because we don't want any leftover legacy data because that could cause errors if uh, you know, a smaller set of data were put on top of a larger one, those extra rows uh, could still be there. So we'd want to make sure we get all that cleared out. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to actually start to uh, basically take all the header values because inside vMix that will make it easier for us if we have the header values. So we're just basically taking that first row with the names of everything that we have in the sheets and we're copying that in to uh, the destination sheet right at the top. So that first row is going to be set with all the names of the data in the different columns. Now, all the heavy lifting is actually done in a very small little bit of code here. And so what we are doing in this bit of code uh, is we're taking the full source data and we're applying a filter to it. So right here, the source data dot filter uh, is a, a construct. This filter is a method that allows us to say, enumerate everything that's in source data and only give me items that match certain criteria found in this function that's after it. So this is something that's totally different from anything we've done in Visual Basic before. In JavaScript, these are called arrow functions. So basically, what this does is it will look at each row inside the, uh, the source data, which is the full spreadsheet. It looks at each row, and it applies this function to it to say, do I want to capture this data, or do I want to ignore this data? So when I'm looking for people that are participating in a specific panel, I have that first column, panel one, that, you know, or two or three or four, so on. What we're going to do here is we'll pass in to say, based on whichever panel we're working with, let's get the right, all of the groups, all of the rows that are have groups of data associated with that panel. And that's what we do here. So we take it row by row. And if 
the row, there is no row. So you basically got something that's totally null. You return false. Uh, if the, uh, the row, the column zero in that row is equal to the group that we're looking for. So that was the argument we passed in in the beginning then return true and return true to the filter method says take that row and add it to this destination data that we're collecting here so that now is going through row by row and every time it finds one that is a match for the group we want it adds that to the destination data and uh at the end if you know if it isn't a match and it's it's an actual row just return false because we don't want that and this is because it's enumerating it's going to go through all of the rows that are in our source data so all of the rows that are in the spreadsheet so it's it's very very compact i know this is a little bit of a dense techie piece but the power of this is really significant because it lets you do these types of crawls through data to find just the things you need and then pull them out and create a new array of data with just the elements you want in it. And that's what we've done here. Now, if there is no data, if basically the length of this destination data is zero, again, we just do a return because there's nothing else that we can do here. But if there is something now, so we know we have destination data, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually now write this destination data into the destination sheet. And so the destination sheet, we're basically starting at the uh, second row because the first row we put the labels for the column headers for everything. And we're basically going and saying, starting from the first column of the second row uh, for everything that's the length of the data. Uh, and then the, this is a little, because I, I mentioned in the beginning that we have an array of array that's basically a uh, you know a nested set of arrays so the first one the length is the length of you know how many different uh rows i have and then the second one is the the length of that second array so if i go for, for zero that's just the width of each row and so that gives me the number of rows and the number of columns and i set all those values to what we captured in destination data up here where we did the source data filter. And that's it. So in this segment of code, what we've done is we found, based on specifying a panel, which panel do we want? We found all the people that match that panel and written them over and write them over now to the destination sheet. So this gives us exactly what we want vMix to be seeing panel by panel. And it's, it's fairly comprehensive that way. But uh, there's more to, to getting all this done. So one of the other things, uh, now let me see if I switch back to the sheet over here. One of the other things that we did for simplicity is we wanted to give whoever is working with this sheet uh, an easy way to pick which group of panelists do they want to copy over? So we've actually set up our own menu option in Google Sheets that if you click on it, it'll let you go and say, which set, which group do I want inside the destination sheet? And so if I switch over to the destination sheet here, you can see if I go set active group, I'll just pick a different group here it now will automatically select everybody from the first group that matches the second group. And this is what we're going to take a look at next in the scripting here. But before I do that, I, I see that uh, we have uh, Sise joined us. Sise, thank you very much. It's always great to have you here. So thank you for taking the time to, to comment and say hi. So. This means in order to do what we want to do here, we have to add a second function. And the way this function, this script, will work is it's basically a function called onOpen. And what this says is any time I open this spreadsheet in Google Sheets, just execute this function. And 
in executing the function, what I'm doing here is I uh, am playing with the UI. So I take my spreadsheet app, which is this whole spreadsheet over here, and I say, get the UI, use the get UI method to get it pointed to the user interface. And then everything that's configurable in the user interface then has methods as well. So we're creating a new menu item called set active group. And then we add to each one of these uh, a, a name that we want to associate that. So group one, group two, group three. But then we're also adding a function that we want to call when you select that menu item. So there's a little bit of a jump here. So one of the things that you cannot do, so normally we just went through this whole thing, this whole function, which said populate group n. The problem is when you do things with the UI, you're not able to pass an argument into the function. You can't do a variable pass here. So what we had to do to make this work is we actually went down and created a whole bunch of other functions that basically do that argument pass for us. So populate group 1 goes to populate group n and passes an argument of 1, and 2 does it with argument 2. So this allowed us now to call these functions down here, these little in redirection functions, that then call the populate group n function we just looked at with the right group number we want. But all we're doing here is we set a, a main menu item and then all the submenu items under it, uh, and we associate the function calls with each of these. So in this case, we could do this with up to 10 different groups. And at the end, we just say the method we use is add to UI, which puts this up here as the set active group over in the spreadsheet and gives us what we want. And you can see we even had something like add separator in that. That gave us a little bit of a spacer there. You could do this to break up groups. So if you had a morning session and an afternoon session, you could do all types of things to keep everything separated cleanly for the way you're going to be using the sheets when they're set up. The other thing to keep in mind uh, while we're over here is that you don't have to do these in order. So it will find everybody that has a match when it does that, uh, that sort of state of filter. It's going to find everybody. So if we put in panel one or panel four, even though these are all the way at the bottom, we added them last minute because somebody gave us some additions they wanted to make. If we put them in at the bottom, it still finds it, and it will deliver that into that destination sheet. So very simple to, to maintain these sheets as well. So with that code, let's just take a quick look of how this would operate if I'm over in vMix. So, so right here, you can see this is the destination uh, uh, folder, the destination source that we have set up for the destination sheet. And this is set up over in vMix, and this is in our data sources manager. So I'll just sort of go into this again so you can see. You go down to the hamburger menu down here, go to data sources manager, and from here you have all your sources. This is event panels, and we have the two, our source panel and our destination panel. So this is all the data that's coming in. So if I go and I change to group four, oh, that's what we're on, so we'll go to change something else. So we'll change to group six here. So now I've done that. It just updated here, and now the refresh cycle of about five seconds that we have for data source manager, it's right down there. Now you see all the new values that are in here. So this is exactly how we're doing it. Anything we want to change over uh, panel to panel, we can do over in the spreadsheet, and that will be reflected in the destination panel over here. And this means that if we put up a, let's put this up as a lower third we have here, I now can just pan through everybody that we have here in the lower thirds that we set up for panel six. But if I go and sort of let's change this back to group seven here, so group seven has three people. You can see now everything has changed, and we have just the three people that we had for panel seven. And this is 
everything that we had in last week's show where you could do things, for instance, where I just want to pick people individually uh, and, you know, call them up. All that's there. Take the downstream key on and off. We did the, uh, the display lower third. If, if you remember, we take that off. We had the ability to call up a lower third and it will automatically bring itself down after about five seconds. All of those things work, but just by going in and changing to another group, and next time I press the button, uh, you can see it just switched over to our next set of lower thirds. So uh, that's a lot that we packed into uh, what is actually a, a, a fairly brief show for what we covered. Hopefully you find this interesting. I mean, what we're trying to do uh, with these, you know, last show and this show is get you thinking about other tools that are available to introduce automation into your productions. Because we are big believers in automation. Uh, not only does it improve reliability because uh, you have code that's doing things as opposed to having somebody have to tap everything uh, out. Uh, but it also means that you can take on more ambitious types of productions. So let me see. We have a couple more questions. So James is asking, how are we uh, triggering the, uh, the lower thirds that we're putting up? So we actually, I don't know if we have a good shot of it, but uh, we have a stream deck over here that we are doing everything with. So... Uh, let me see, I'll sort of show the two sides to this. So on one side, we're using shortcuts for everything. And the way we do the shortcuts is we have a data source uh, select the row. Uh, and basically that just says whichever row in that destination spreadsheet uh, we want to have active, that's the one we want to select. And we're using a dynamic value uh, to dynamic variable, the dynamic value number one specifically, to assign what uh, person number, what position number uh, we want to use in that panel list. And so when we do this, we then have a set of buttons that are basically filling in. It says in the events panel spreadsheet, the destination sheet, we want row zero, row one, row two, and that's all we're doing. So we populate that and we trigger these using our uh, Stream Deck. So the Stream Deck basically uh, sort of give us a little bit of a pull over here. So everything I'm doing over here, we just we can pick whichever one of the up we have up to ten here, and when we put that up on the screen. So if I go, I want to do number one, and I select that source. You can see I just pulled up number one and number three. Select source. Uh, so this gives me now the ability in the Stream Deck to basically say, I want to get any one of the panelists from one to 10, I can pull those up. And then using the Google Sheets, I can pick which panel am I on. And that probably is a logical way to split up how things are done, but that's how we're triggering it. So Stream Deck to uh, some uh, basic shortcuts inside of vMix, and we're using a dynamic value to hold uh, which uh, guest in the, uh, on that panel do I want to display the lower third for? So, so we also have uh, uh, Mike Heffernan. So, Mike, great to have you here again. So, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, so, as I was saying, you know, I think we talked a lot about vMix scripting, and we're going to continue working on that. But I think it's going to become important to look at the automation and scripting capabilities on a lot of other platforms especially because productions are based on a broader set of tools than a single tool like vMix. I mean, vMix is incredibly powerful, but you may want to do things where you're controlling signage and you're controlling things like lower thirds and you're controlling all the things you want to switch in your production. So having tools which are flexible across different platforms and maybe single tools that can control multiple platforms, uh, things like central control, uh, those types of automation tools are really powerful. So this hopefully introduces another scripting tool that you can add to your toolkit. And it will definitely be something we'll be covering again. 
So uh, I guess for right now, we'll call the show a wrap. Uh, unfortunately, we will not be here next week for a show. We're going to be on the road uh, traveling. So that's our flying day. So, uh, but so in two weeks, though, we'll be back with another show. But uh, we definitely welcome everyone uh, here to stay for the post show. Uh, a little more casual. Ask any questions you want. We're very happy to sort of discuss any streaming video production related topic. And, uh, you know, everybody is in, invited to, uh, to chime in if you have answers or uh, other questions. So, so before we take off, I just want to say again, thanks to Mike uh, Hefferman. He, uh, you know, enjoyed the show. So we appreciate uh, that, Mike. Uh, and Pablo, uh, uh, I, I would probably say your name wrong, Pablo. So I'll just stop there. Thank you for joining us from, uh, from Argentina. That's great to have you here. So, okay, everyone, we'll see you in a few uh, for the after show. And if not, we'll see you in a couple of weeks for our next show. Thanks for joining. All right. Welcome back, everybody. So thank you for, for joining us for, for this show. Uh, when we did the first show, we recognized that we were only going to be able to cover a part of what could be done with Google Sheets. But keep in mind that what we did here with scripting is really just a part of what the Google App Suite lets you do. So there are scripting tools for everything from emails to uh, uh, spreadsheets to effectively all of their applications have different scripting. And that's something that definitely would be a, uh, a thing to start to investigate because there could be lots of capabilities you may want to add with other tools that are in the toolkit. But uh, so let's see. So Fiat Ministry, uh, they said, is there a way to send audio from a vMix call to a free conference call? So Yes, there, there are several ways to, to handle this. So inside of vMix, let me go over here. And if I go to audio outputs, one of the things you'll see is that you can actually assign physical devices. In this case, we had Dante set up because this is what we used in the last show. But any type of audio device that we would want to send out, we could send that out through uh, a physical audio device. So something like I could send it to my monitor, I could send it to a, an eighth inch audio jack uh, to something that I want to send out to speakers. So when you ask about sending audio from vMix to a conference call system, there are two possible ways to do this. One, uh, if you are running the free conference call system on the same system that you're running vMix, there's something called virtual audio cables. And what, what virtual audio cables, VB audio would be, uh, the, just look up VB audio in Google and you'll find them there. Uh, what that will let you do is effectively create a virtual pipe, an audio pipe between two different applications inside of Windows. So I could assign a VB audio cable as an output device to one of my buses in vMix. And then I could take, and in my audio conferencing app, it'll just see that as a standard Windows audio device. So when it asks me what's my microphone, I would pick VB audio cable as an input. And now you'll have that connection coming from one of the vMix channels, uh, you know, one of the vMix buses out to your conference call uh, software. If you're doing it across systems, uh, there are things you could do with Dante. There are things you could do with physical cables. So if it's another system, you could do sort of a line out to a line in using eighth inch audio cables, something like that. But that will give you a uh, another way to, to sort of handle the both sides of uh, a, an audio connection that you want to do between applications. So hopefully that uh, gets you started on an answer to that. So let me see, James has a question here. So 
So yes, so uh, companion companion is definitely another uh, application that lets you do a lot of very powerful things. Uh, it has uh, definitely a lot of overlap with what you would see uh, in central control. So definitely something to look into. It is it is a sort of a free uh, open source app, and it is being enhanced all the time. So there are a lot of new things that would come in. It does work very well, uh, you know, this way. Uh, so the so James is, is saying that you could set it up so that uh, you could actually have their names uh, and uh, sort of set it up as part of the process in the CGs. So the the quick answer is yes. There are anything we show. I think it's important, you know, I underscore this, everything we show is more to introduce methods of doing things as opposed to a way to do a specific thing. And uh, your, I mean, James's point is very well taken here. You know, Companion does offer this. There are ways you can do it in, <coughs> oh, excuse me, in Excel. You can do things using XML and write that to files. Uh, so. Lots of different ways in here. And Companion is definitely something that's worth investigating. Uh, so if you haven't looked at Companion, uh, it, it would be definitely worth a, uh, a download and some time to play with it. It may work for you, it may not, but there are definitely lots of good solutions for doing what we showed today. And I think more of what we wanted to cover was the concept that there are multiple places you can do scripting. So, you know, just when you thought it was safe to go into vMix with scripting, now we throw another one out there. But yeah, there is a, there are lots of different ways to do scripting uh, in a Windows-based environment and then to leverage things. So for instance, another thing inside of Google Apps, you can actually publish an app. And when you publish an app, that means it's sort of approved by Google and can go, can go out you could actually then control that app using HTTP requests. So you could have things that would respond to HTTP requests. And that's something you could do like right from a stream deck, put HTTP request in, go there and have that do things remotely. So in theory, we could have a set of buttons in our stream deck to say, which panel do I want? That could be send an HTTP request out to Google Sheets if we had a published app. And that could make that change for us dynamically, and then we could pick cat panelists. So you could do a lot more as you as you work with all these different tools. But uh, Companion is definitely a good one to, to take a look at. So, so Otis, Otis, uh, so hello back from Trenton, New Jersey. So uh, <laughs> we're we're sort of uh, not not the big wide open country, but uh, the, our nice little neck of the woods here. We enjoy it. So let's see, so Fiat Ministry, uh, they're saying, okay, yeah, I, we, we love sharing this. And, and one of the things that would actually, like your question right here was, was a great one. These types of things help us decide what to cover and show. So uh, as I said, if you just, if you want to send somebody, send it to john at streamingalchemy.tv. And if you have uh, ideas for shows, if you have questions for things, uh, uh, you'd, you'd like to figure out how to solve. It may make a show. It may not, but we'll we'll do everything we can. You know, if there's something we know to to share that with you and, and help. But it also, my general belief is that if one person is trying to figure out how to do something, there are probably other people as well. So most most questions end up being good topics to cover. So we're we're really uh, always open to to these types of feedback and suggestions for things. And it always starts with the question, how can I? And and from there, you, a lot of good things usually follow from that. So uh, thank you for uh, for the feedback there. I definitely appreciate it. So uh, are there any other questions? Uh, this was uh, definitely something uh, I thought was an interesting topic to cover. So I'll, I'll just talk about one more thing that we had uh, before we uh, you know, to give everybody a chance to get questions in. One of the other things, even though we did this all with, with Rose, 
you could do multiple data sets from this. So it cannot just be, it could be more than just panelists. So if you wanted to have rows that you were using that had information for graphics, for slide decks, for uh, things beyond lower thirds that you may use if you had signage outside a room. You could have a name and description for the panel that's coming up. You could have the next panel coming. All of these things you could actually take and populate in a spreadsheet and then use scripting to pull those things out. So there's a lot more you can do than just the lower third piece. We use this as the example. But keep that in mind as you, as you think of different ways you could use uh, the scripting inside of Sheets to do things. So Mike has a question. He says, wondering if there is a graphic server program that would ship out uh, an NDI feed. So yes, there are. I mean, so there's uh, New Blue has a program. Uh, which is NDI uh, broadcast. Uh, but the other thing to, uh, to keep in mind is that we are actually using vMix uh, to ship out pre-multiplied alpha channel graphics to our TriCaster system, which we switched the show on. So all these things you see with the lower thirds, that is something coming from vMix over NDI into the TriCaster as a downstream key. So uh, definitely multiple ways to do it. New Blue uh, is it's very complicated. So it's something where if you had things that were very sophisticated, uh, definitely take a look at it. We have it. We haven't used it as much as we thought we were going to use it initially. Uh, so this is it's probably meant for shows with more complexity than we have, but they have. Uh, Two, two versions that actually have NDI support, one with two channels of NDI and the other with 16 channels and prices that are <laughs> commensurate with that. So definitely something to look at. But we think what vMix does itself, especially because you can use vMix, even the, the lower end uh, versions of vMix to, you know, they have like their basic HD, perfect for being a graphic station. You can use, you know, uh, the basic title designer in that and uh, work with uh, work with lower thirds and basic stuff from that, and you get vMix Social and other things all wrapped into that, and it does everything you may want to do for putting up graphics over NDI. So, so let's see. So, so you could so so Mike is following that up. He says so you could run it on a separate machine and decouple from specific switching software. Yes. So. You, we run vMix on its own machine uh, over in another system in the production studio, and that just goes across the network, so totally separate from the TriCaster. Uh, I would be able to pick any of those sources up uh, here on this system here, which is the other great thing. When you're sending this out NDI, it has legs, <laughs> so it's not a, a hard wire. This can go to any station you want. So if you wanted somebody else to, to do something here with that graphic and then forward that on as NDI, all that ability is, is baked in. That's the beauty of NDI. NDI is like a the world's greatest patch panel. You can just <laughs> plug anything in and create all sorts of chains of processing. You have latency that gets introduced, but definitely a very cool way to, to work with video sources. And it does support alpha channels. So you just select pre-multiplied, and when you send that out, that will give you a, an alpha channel based NDI feed. So, so Mike, uh, yeah, yeah. What if you would? I'm sorry if I got this. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I was confusing what you were saying. The the data set is running in in Google. So somebody in a totally different location can change the data, can update uh, the panels that are being used. All of that stuff is totally separate. VMix is pulling that data in from the cloud. So there is no local data store for this. So it gives you exact that. So I'm sorry if I was confusing the NDI on a remote system with the data on a remote system. The data can definitely be on a remote system and you know any anybody that you want to have manage that. So you could have a client actually go there and make sure all the spellings and everything are correct, make any changes they want, and then you could have somebody else, either remote or local, change for panel to panel. So all that's sort of baked into this approach here. So uh, thanks, James. I appreciate you clarifying that because I, I probably missed that. So 
So Lance, uh, Lance, thank you for joining us, Lance. Uh, so he says, could you use Google Sheets to update a scoreboard, like for a game show? Absolutely. But keep in mind that there is some latency. So if you needed something which was going to be speedy, uh, it would probably, you know, you'd probably have to make sure the timing would work. But it, if you can do something that if it updates within five seconds of when you change the data, you'd probably be, be fine with this. Uh, you could push it, but it's, as we mentioned last week, there is an API query limit. So I believe it's 100 queries per 100 seconds is the way uh, they do it. And so if you over query, then you're going to end up getting shut down and it, it wouldn't, it would block you for a period of time until it caught up. But you can, you can do this into vMix very, very straightforward way for any type of, any type of data you can encapsulate in a spreadsheet. So very, very powerful for those types of things. So, so yeah, and, 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 you know, uh, JP, uh, thank you. Yeah. It, this would all just flow into whatever title you want to set up in title designer and they can be dynamic and, uh, can have, I mean, cause there's animation inside ta title designer. So you can have like data change animations, which can do something that is a little flashier when you want to pull, like change a score or, or, or update a, uh, a, a text box or something on the, uh, on the, the lower third, the animated in GT title designer, there's, there's animation for that as well. So you could actually do things definitely. And that are, are pretty cool looking for those types of applications. And it's just the latency. If, if you can work within the latency, you, you should be golden. So, so Mike uh, has to drop for a meeting. So Mike, <laughs> thank you for taking the time to join us. Really appreciate that. Uh, you know, we know, Everybody takes time out of the day for this, and we're definitely very grateful for that. So I guess that's probably a wrap for this week. Uh, thank you all for hanging around for the post show. Uh, always a lot of fun. Uh, as I said, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to have a show this next Friday because we'll be traveling for client work. But uh, w the Friday after, we will definitely uh, be back with another show. Uh, and also, uh, just a keep in mind, we will also be broadcasting live from the NAB show in Las Vegas in October. So we'll have shows every day from the show floor, uh, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. So I believe that's the 9th to the 11th of October at 3 p.m. So... Uh, that will be, we, we probably won't be able to do a show that Friday before we head out, but we'll be giving you uh, three shows that week. So we hope to have you tune in. Thank you, everybody. Uh, great having you here. See you for the next show. Take care.